Following up on that cricket story, I have with me in studio our resident cricket analyst, Dulunga Kupiso, to discuss the overhaul of the SA cricket team management structure in the wake of a dismal ICC World Cup display and what it really means. Welcome to Sport on Full View, Lunga. So much to be discussed in terms of the CSA board approving this new structure. And uh, one of the aspects is that there is a new uh, creation of a position, which is the director. Uh, do you feel like they are just giving them too much power as management? I don't think it's too much power, but perhaps it is a necessary shift that is happening right now at CSA in terms of trying to find a balance on how to communicate messages between the team and the organization and mm. keep the team connected. So trying not to cut that umbilical cord between the team and the organization. Um, if you look at England, they've also uh, appointed a director of cricket yeah. two, two and a half years ago in Andrew Strauss. So it's something that has become a norm uh, in cricket. Uh, it's something that was already a norm in football because there's a director of football. And that guy is supposed to be uh, somebody who keeps the team and the organization in, in sync in terms of the direction that they are taking and also to try and limit the interference between the politics of the organization mm. and the performance of the team. All right. So now when we have a look at the head coach, U Otis Gibson, and his supporting staff, they also have their heads on the chopping block. His contract has not been renewed. Is it safe to say that CSA is panicking? I don't think they're panicking. I said two years ago when he was appointed, or two and a half years ago, sitting right here, I said, I don't see Otis as an appointment that is envisaged beyond the World Cup. It's mm. just a short-term fix. Uh, and I believed back then that CSA were cooking someone within our system to get him ready for this post. Whether that becomes true or not, we will see as time comes. So uh, Otis was never really appointed to last beyond the World Cup. Of course, if he had gone to win the World Cup, then yeah, sure, I think he would have kept his place. I don't think Cricket South Africa are panicking at all. Mm -hmm. I just think they are now unraveling their real plans on the coaching of the Proteus side. And just to talk about that, a lot of names are being thrown around, and yeah. one of those is Inokungwe. Mm. Excuse me. Is he a suitable candidate? Is he suitable? Does that mean, does he have what it takes to coach an international side? The short end of the stick is yes. Is this the right time maybe to put Enoch within the Proteus setup? I don't think so if they are appointing him as an interim coach. Mm -hmm. Back the guy, give him a four-year contract from now until the next World Cup. Say, here, build the Proteus from test to T20s uh, with the World Cup in four years' time as the end goal. But don't appoint him as an interim coach. He goes to India. He doesn't uh, get the best out of the Proteas in, what, two weeks, three weeks that he would get to set up the Proteas and then use that as a marker. So if they're using it as a marker to judge whether Enoch has what it takes to work with the Proteas, then Enoch is not the right man. But if they're going to give him a four-year contract and say, build for the next World Cup, then yeah, sure, Enoch is the right man. He's done it with the um, Zanzi Super League, uh, Josie Stars. He's done it with the Lions uh, in his first season. So he has what it takes, yeah. All right. And the credentials of Ashwell Prince, what do you make of those? Prince has done well as well uh, down in the Western Cape. Um, he's also produced some pretty good uh, results. He's mm -hmm. produced some neat players out of the uh, Cape Cobras as well in the limited version. Uh, so whether that also could be a potential uh, partnership between Ashwell Prince and uh, Enoch Ngwe, yeah. only time remains to be seen. Is South Africa ready uh, to have a black head coach and a black assistant coach? Uh, I don't know, but hey, time will tell. No, absolutely. But there's so much silence around Jeffrey Toyana. Why, why would that be? I crowd foul when Otis was appointed as head coach uh, and Jeff was overlooked because I genuinely believed Jeff had what it takes at the time. He still does have what it takes now. Mm -hmm. And I made a mention back then that there were seven Proteas that Jeff had produced that are now within the Proteas camp and they're still there. So that working relationship mm -hmm. is there with those players. Uh, it's just unfortunate. I guess uh, some people will, will always be fa favored within the spotlight and others would have to work three times, four times harder to just get the recognition. It's just how it, how it works, I guess. Uh, but it is unfortunate because I do, I do see a Jeff doing well within mm. you know, that Proteus, uh, Proteus environment. Uh, 
essentially at international level you're not looking for a parent you're looking for somebody who's going to just monitor how your game is going help you Take tweak direction. certain yeah. things to become a better version of what you already are and Jeff is that kind of character. I mean, he would have never had the kind of success that he had with the High Five Lions if he wasn't mm -hmm. uh, credible enough as a coach. He definitely wouldn't have produced the amount of Proteas that we have um, within the Proteas. And they just didn't come through to the Proteas and just fill gaps. They actually came through and became stars of the yeah. Proteas. So it, it is unfortunate. Um, but we'll see. We'll see who they have. They're very mum on who are the candidates, yeah. uh, but they didn't deny when questions were being thrown on Enoch, so interesting times. It is interesting times, but do you feel that this drastic change was made too soon when we think about the all-important tour of India that is coming up? It depends. So if Cricket South Africa is looking at the next World Cup as what they're planning for now, sure, this is great. Okay. But if they're planning to be a test-dominating side, then maybe it's not so great because you are about to embark on one of the hardest uh, test challenges which is to tour India, play three test matches against an Indian side that is firing on all cylinders. So it all depends on the end goal. Um, I believe right after the World Cup that's when you must look to restructure and try and find ways of uh, putting together a fresh looking team or a fresh looking management within the team. So I don't think the timing is wrong at all, unless Cricket South Africa wants a test dominating side, then yeah, sure, maybe the timing could be bad. But the fact that uh, Faf Duplessis is staying on as captain mm -hmm. is also something that then will help with continuity in terms of leadership if Cricket South Africa wants to dominate the test scene. But Fresh blood coming in, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, no? and, and, and that's where I want to piggyback right now. We are aware that Faf Duplessis will captain the side mm. for the tour. We, which are some of the youngsters which we could also see coming through into the team? So uh, Otis did well within the T20 side in terms of experimenting with the youngsters that are coming through the, the franchise system. So your Snetemba mm. Kleshiles, uh, for example, who really did well uh, in that Zanzi Super League. So those kind of guys, uh, and also they came into that T20 side and they did well. Yeah. Now, to try and find a smart way of filtering them through from T20 to the limited uh, overs game, then to the test side, is something that really needs a fine balance. And the time to do it is immediately after a World Cup. Because after a World Cup, everybody is still uh, caught up on, well, the disappointment of the World Cup or the hype if you're an English side. And the time to experiment then is now because there is an end vision. Um, but whether this tour of India is the right place to be doing it? I don't think so. So m maybe wait up until the end of India before you then go and experiment because the South African fr fans are looking for a bit of positivity around the team. Yeah. Before I let you go, Lunga, I just want to put your head on the chopping block. Who would you say should come through and replace Gibson? I wouldn't mind a Lance Klusner coming on. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying appoint Lance as the head coach, but definitely he's uh, and his colors within the coaching system. So Lance Clues now working alongside an Enoch Gway, if Enoch is the leading candidate. I still believe in Jeffrey Toyana uh, as a head coach. Uh, so those three guys for me. And then lend some sort of experience from guys that came through the system. So mm -hmm. for example, we see the likes of John T. Rhodes doing well in the IPLs and any other uh, international team in the world. But we don't see them given a chance within our, our supporting structures. But from the core group of uh, managers within the Proteus camp, Lance Clues now working with the Jeffrey Toyana and then Enoch Ngwe. That could work. Where is Makai Andini? Why is no one saying anything about, uh, you know, an iconic black cricketer uh, from South Africa in terms of uh, the bowling unit? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, those are the names I would love to throw in the hat and see what CSA does. All right. And just as an aside, the Cricket Awards were recently held. Your take on the event and some of uh, the award winners? It was a bit of a subdued year. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the World Cup performance also didn't help. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of excitement around that from a fan perspective. Uh, but those that were deserving um, uh, of being celebrated on the night were celebrated. So the likes of Enoch Ngwe was celebrated as yeah. our domestic coach of the year. Um, I, I did appreciate, though, in the morning they have the KFC um, awards. So it yes. focuses on mini cricket. Yeah. And I think it's something that 
generally around the world, except for the Australians, we don't really focus on speaking to the next generation of cricketers. We only speak to them when they're in high school. So I like the fact that there was a much broader spotlight um, on, on KFC mini cricket, which is great because if you start um, infecting these youngsters with mm -hmm. the bug for cricket in primary school, then they grow up with it and they start learning the skill from a young age. Uh, and now that's really speaking to grassroots. As for the main, main evening, mm, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to write home about. But thank you so much for joining us in studio. You always have pearls of wisdom. That was, of course, our Give resident cricket analyst, Ulunga Kupiso, giving us his pearls of wisdom. And that is where we wrap it up from the Sport Desk. Thank you so much for tuning in to the full view.